Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and in this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate your CR10, go through the settings and do your first print. So hopping right into the video, those of you who are watching probably have a new CR10 or thinking about buying one. And the CR10 printers have become extremely popular in the past year due to their low price, great print quality, build quality and ease of use. So this printer is being purchased by more and more beginners trying to get into 3D printing. But the CR10 is not only for beginners, as many experts love using this printer as well. When the printer is taken out of the box and put together, it's a little confusing about what to do from there. So that's why I created this video to show how to calibrate the CR10, go through the printer settings and complete the first print. So when you get a new 3D printer, the first thing you should automatically do is to calibrate the printer. So on the CR10, there are three end switches and a couple motors that you make sure are plugged in correctly. So there are numbers or letters on the wire and you should match them up with the corresponding port on either the motor or the end stops. You can look off this graphic here to see where each wire goes. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put an adhesion material on your bed. So you can either use the tape that comes with it or put a glue stick on the bed. So after that, you're gonna to wanna to go into the settings on your printer, click repair, then auto home, and your printer will automatically calibrate to the home position, which on CR10s, it's the front left corner of the bed. And the nozzle will go down until it hits the Z end stop. And from there, you wanna get a piece of paper, which paper is 0.1 millimeters thick about, and that's the height that you want your nozzle to be above the bed. So you wanna rub that piece of paper in between the bed and the nozzle, and you want it to be able to just slightly touch the nozzle. So you wanna feel a little bit of resistance, but not a ton. So if you feel some resistance or you feel nothing, there are four knobs on the bottom of the heated bed. You wanna twist those up or down. So each of the four corners is 0.1 millimeters above the bed, or the thickness of the piece of paper. Once you get one corner done, you can move the bed and the print head by hand. And if they're stuck, go back into the menu, click repair, then disable steppers, and that should free up the motors. And you'll be able to move the bed around freely. So once you've done this to all four corners of the bed, press auto home again and a few more times and just double check and triple check. Make sure that the bed is 0.1 millimeters below the nozzle. So when calibrating this CR10, something that I found was an issue with mine when I took it out of the box was that the right side of the X carriage was a little bit too tight and resulting in the carriage not moving up parallel to the bed on both sides. So to fix this, I got the wrench and the Allen key in the package and I loosened the right side rollers on the X carriage and this allowed the carriage to move up nice and even and not be stuck on the right side which allowed for much better prints as well. And while you're at it, you might as well check and see if the bed rollers on the bottom of the heated bed are a little bit off as well. So move the bed back and forth, and if it's a little bit wobbly, you might wanna tighten up those rollers under the bed and make sure that everything moves nice and evenly. Also, make sure that all the belts on the CR10 are nice and tight, but not too tight so that they're gonna break, or not too loose that they're flopping around, but tight enough so that you can feel the bed moving very snug and X carriage and extruder are moving stiffly and strong and not very wobbly or loose. Another thing you should look at is to make sure that the Z axis lead screw is well lubricated and straight. All right, so now I'll go over the settings on the CR10 printer. So you can see here is the main front screen with all the info. If you click on the big button, it goes into the sub menu, which has prepare, control, print from SD or change SD card. So if we go back to the info screen, which is the main screen, you can see the nozzle temperature, the heated bed temperature, the fan speed, under that is the X, Y, and Z position as it's at right now, the flow rate, which is how fast the printer goes, how much time has elapsed in the print, the progress of the print, and a status bar. So if we go to prepare, you can see there's disabled steppers, which stops the steppers from being power put to them and allows them to be moved around by hand. The next thing is auto home, which you've already seen, which automatically moves the print bed into the home position. There's preheat PLA and ABS, which automatically sets the printer up and ready to print PLA or ABS prints. Also, if you go down in the prepare menu, you can see there's cool down, which stops the heat from going to the nozzle or the bed and cools the printer down and gets it ready to turn off. 
Also, if you, if you go down even more, there's move axes, which allows you to move the X, Y, Z, or extruder in any distance you want. If you go back, we can go down to control, which is the second main menu. And from there, we can go to temperature, adjust the temperature on the nozzle, bed, we can adjust the fan speed, things like that. So you can see here that I can move the nozzle temperature around. Now, now we can go to fan speed, auto temp, and there are a lot of other things here in this menu too. None of these you need to know of, except for the preheat P-Lite and ABS config. And this is where you can set up what the printer will heat up to when you press the preheat P-Lite or ABS that you saw in the other menu. So if we go back, we can see there's motion, which allows you to adjust the Z offset, things like that, and the jerk, which you should pretty much never need to touch. You can see there's a lot of stuff here which you don't need to touch right now. Also, there's LCD contrast, which is the brightness of the display. Also, you can go to restore failsafe, which restores all the settings to the factory default. So back to the main menu, if you go to print from SD card, you can see all the different files that we have on our SD card that we can click, and the printer will start to print from that. Also, if you go to change SD card, it just ejects the SD card from the machine, and you can take it out to put more files on it. So now we're gonna move into getting your first print done. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to grab the micro SD card and the micro SD card reader. So it's this tiny little card and you're gonna put it inside the USB reader that comes with the printer, stick it into your computer, and it should show up on your computer. So next, we're gonna download a slicer software. I would recommend Cura software, you just Google Cura, and it should be the first link. This is a slicer software made by Ultimaker, which is a 3D printer company. We'll put a link down below where you can download this. And I also made a full video about Cura. I'll put a link up above right here. So once you download the software, here are the settings that I use for my CR10, and it should be exactly the same for yours. So you can see the build dimensions are 300 by 300 by 400. It has a rectangular build plate. It has a heated bed. There's one extruder. The material diameter is 1.75, and the nozzle size is 0.4 millimeters. So once we've finished setting up our slicer software, we're gonna head over to thingiverse.com to find a model that we're gonna print. So you can just type in Thingiverse on Google and it should be the first link. And then in the search box, we're gonna type in 3D Benchy, which is the test object that we're gonna print on your CR10 printer. It should look like this with a green picture on the front. When you're on the profile, you're gonna click Thing Files and you're gonna click the full Benchy. Now you're gonna drag that STL file into Cura. It should show up on the build plate. And you're gonna to have to adjust a few settings to get the Benchy to come out perfect. So I'll show you the settings that I use to print my Benchy. But if you wanna learn how to use Cura, the slicer software, I'll put a link down below on a video that I made about Cura. And I'll put a tag up above right here. So in Cura, once you import an object, you can move it around the bed. You can right click, click center. If you click on the model, you can scale it up or down as you can see right here. Also, you can rotate the object like this into different positions. Once you find a size that you want to print the Benchy, you can go into the right hand side, click custom settings, and you're gonna to want to change the settings to the ones that I'm showing you here. So these settings are very important and will dramatically impact the print quality of your Benchy. So these are the settings that your printer will use to print the object. So you wanna get these pretty much exactly the same as mine. So once that's done, you can see how long the Benchy will take the print. You can go into the left side, click layer view, and you can drag down the slider and see every single layer that the CR10 will print. And this is just a double check to make sure that everything looks correct as you set it in the settings. And once that is all set, you can set the object back to object view and then click save to removable drive. This will save the file in a .g code file to the SD card to be put into the printer to print. So. We'll take the micro SD card out of the USB reader, stick it in the CR10, and then you want to go into the menu and get it ready and heated up to print your object. So you can go into prepare or control, click temperature, go to nozzle, bring it up to the height that your filament says. Mine's about 195, and then go to the bed and heat up your bed to the temperature that it says on your filament. Mine's about 60, and then I'll go back and on the info screen it says 195 and 60. So once that's heated up, you can grab your spool of filament, cut off the end to make sure it's a nice point, then feed it into the Bowden extruder right here, and then it should come out nice and smooth like this in a straight line out of your nozzle. So once all that's set up, you can go back into the menu, click print from SD card, 
you can click refresh until all your, all your objects show up. Then scroll down until you find the name of your object, click it, and it should automatically home. Wait a second or two and then start printing. So as you can see here, the CR10 is, is homing itself and then it starts automatically printing the 3D bench sheet in the middle of the bed. So I usually watch the first few layers, make sure that everything lays down nice and smooth and everything looks good. And once that's happening, I can walk away and then I check back probably every 20 minutes or so to make sure everything looks good. And as you can see here, this bench is coming out super, super nice with my Hatchbox PLA filament. And when the object's done, it's gonna home itself again and push the build plate back. You can pull it forward to see your object or the 3D Benchy, and you wanna let it sit for a little bit to let it cool down, and then use the paint scraper to scrape it off the bed, and you can see your perfectly printed Benchy on the CR10. So, if you have any questions about printing, or if your Benchy doesn't look like mine, comment down below, I'll try to help you as much as I can. And when you're done printing, you can go and turn the nozzle back up to the temperature, and then you're gonna to wanna to take out the filament spool from your printer, because you don't want to leave it in your nozzle. So you're going to take out the filament, spool it up again. You might want to cut the end off again to get it ready for your next print. And then you're going to stick the filament inside the spool so it doesn't unwind. And then you can go back into the settings and click cool down to cool everything on the printer down and get it ready to turn off. Now grab a big Ziploc bag, put some silica packets in it along with the spool, and this keeps out all the air and just allows your filament to last just a little bit longer and the PLA doesn't dry out. But PLA usually doesn't dry out that much, so you're probably fine without a plastic bag, but it's just a small safety precaution. So, thanks for watching this video guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions at all, and I'll see you guys in the next video.